everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Music Biz Weekly Podcast, brought to you by the fine folks over at HypeBot.com. Thank you, Bruce, yes, and everybody for everything you do to support the show and support the music industry. Everybody needs to go check out HypeBot.com. Um, so, Jay, we got a special guest today, and um, before I introduce our guest and what he does, let me preface this by saying, Sit through this, people. You're going to want to hear this. This might be a little scary at first, but it's not. Christopher Prouty from Nine Twice, NineTwice.com, right, yeah. um, is going to join us, and we're going to talk about SEO. And right there, I can imagine people are like, <laughs> what the hell? SEO. Hang in there. CO? What is CO? Um, search engine optimization. It's not as scary as you think it is. Chris does this um, for a living. Um, full disclosure, I've known Chris for years. He's helped me out. That's why I wanted to bring him in to talk about this. Because there are so many people who claim to be SEO experts out there. And as a musician... It goes without saying you better have a website. So we're not going to beat you up over that. But once you have a website and you have a domain name, it's amazing the emails that start coming into your inbox from people you've never heard of. And they're usually companies selling you services. They find your contact information either on right. your website or your domain registration. Public There's, info. It's public yeah. info. They go to who is and there's an email address. <clears throat> and, you know, these, these companies are literally just mass mailing millions of people on the chance that 1% of a million emails turns into business for them. Um, but the emails, I've gotten them. I'm sure all three of us have gotten them. And I'm, yep. I'm assuming Every many week. of our, wash, our, our, <clears throat> our listeners and viewers have also gotten them. We'll say something along the lines of, hey, we just came across your website. Boy, you've got no traffic. Boy, you've got no presence in Google. You've got no presence in social media. Um, countless different things that they will say to scare you into thinking your website really sucks. And they're going to offer you a free consultation to tell you what's wrong and what they can do to fix it. I, Chris, I want you to sort of take us through mm -hmm. a couple things. Let's just talk about the real basics of SEO. I don't want to get sure. down and dirty on this. Let's what is it? Why is it important? And then let's talk about what to look for when you get that offer for an SEO consultation or you think you need some SEO help and what should you be looking for and asking? Yeah, sure. And Chris, so, one other thing before you start, one, yeah, one thing sure. I'd love for you to touch on is there seems to be confusion between what is SEO and what is SEM? And mm -hmm. sometimes they're used interchangeably. So as you kind of explain this to folks, if you could kind of touch on that. Sure. Yeah, I, I'd absolutely <clears throat> love to uh, talk about that. And, and you know, I'll just say I appreciate you having having me on today. I love to talk about this stuff because I do this stuff every – like I literally think about this stuff every minute that I'm awake and, and most <laughs> of the minutes that I'm asleep because this is – you know, I've been doing this – uh, for 18 years, and and Mike, you and I've been working together for about six, maybe seven years. It, you know, it's just, uh, it's just this is my passion. It's what I absolutely love to do. One of the uh, an another way, aside from like looking at who is or looking at your your domain records that that uh, these guys will get a hold of you is they'll just they'll scrape the internet looking for contact forms on websites because contact forms have digital signatures that that are easy to identify if you're scraping the, you're scraping the internet and so they'll find the contact form and they have a robot that just fills it out and sends you that email and, and they can just let this churn all day long. There's really no human that even has to do it. And Mike, like you said, if there's, you know, if they send out a million of these a day and they even get a 0.01% conversion and they pick up a couple of new clients, even though they're not going to do the job that they say they're going to do. And that's, it's always the case with these guys. Um, the response that I, that I often talk to people about when they get these emails, when they say, Hey, I came across your website and you don't have a presence in Google. Well, the first question I'm going to ask is, well, if I don't have a presence in Google, how'd you come across my website? 
<laughs> you know, it's you know, you're telling me that I don't have good SEO, but somehow you, you found, found me. me. <laughs> you, you found me, so I, I must. It, it it is fun every <laughs> once in a while, you know. When I've got a slow That's day, awesome. I'll play with one of those those cold emails, and yeah. and 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 it's you know, hey, you've got no presence on social media. I'm like, really? I've got yeah. no presence on social media. Where were you looking? <laughs> Google I love, Plus. I love, it when, I love it when I get solicited for SEO. You know, they'll you know they'll they'll oh, send me, hey, you can. You can. Okay, well. That's fine. So, so let's define SEO in just a real, in Please. real, in real basic terms, right? Because I, because I've heard people say SEO is free traffic, and and sure, you can get free traffic from SEO, but SEO itself is not free traffic. Free traffic is the result of SEO. Gotcha. Right. SEO, search engine optimization, are the efforts that you can take or that that I take to influence the search engines to position your content higher than anybody else's. So it's the efforts that you do to let the search engines know that your content is better than your competition. And, it's and really let, that simple. Let, and and it, it, it's a couple things I look at it as. It's always better. I mean, there's that old old saying is, you know, if you're on page two of Google, you basically don't exist. Everybody yeah, wants right. to be on page one of Google. But what SEO is also about is just being discovered in searches. And, and one of the, the simplest examples I've always given clients is, you know, you've got a blog on your website, and you're going to make a post to announce your brand new album. The headline should not be, I've released my new album, because that's n nobody is going to go into Google and search for, I've released a new album. <clears throat> they will search for Jay Gilbert's new album, the mm -hmm. best music in the world. So you have to think in the mindset of what people actually Somebody type searching. in. And that needs to be your headline. <clears throat> so it has to, your headline on your website is, Jay Gilbert releases brand new album, the best music in the world. Because that's what people will search for. That might not give you a number one search result for your name, but what it will give you is a search result if somebody searches for your new album. And that's that's hyper targeting. And that goes for, for bands that are on tour as well. Because as a as a, a music fan, I'm going to type name of band tour 2019. Yeah. So that those are the phrases that you want to put together in your title and that you want to have within the within the context or within the con within the content in, in the article. You want to think about what the fan is going to be typing you know, so that they find you. That's that's hyper targeting. Right. So yeah. And you find when you do advertising, whether it's AdWords or any type of online advertising, if you use super common generic words, th your money is going to burn up really fast. No yeah. one's going to find you. You need to be what you're describing as something hyper specific to what you are. Yeah. You know, and it's interesting because there are tools that we can use that will hone in on the exact search phrases that people are typing because Google records all of this stuff. So there, you know, there are tools, you know, like even like Google ads, you, you can get into Google ads and look at and do key phrase research in there. But, but just jumping back, the SEO are the efforts that you take to try to convince the search engines to position your content higher for the target audience that you think is searching for your for your content. Because, you know, Mike, like you said, it doesn't make sense to rank for phrases that no one's searching for. Or, you know, Jay, like you said, for phrases that, that just don't, you know, that are just so generic that you're just, you're wasting your time. Yeah. So, Makes you know, that's SEO. Sense. That's search engine okay. optimization. We're optimizing the content. Search engine marketing, or SEM, is the process of paying the search engines so that you show up high as when, an when, ad. When, when you do a Google search, if you notice, sponsored ads, sponsored yep. results at the top in various locations, that's SEM. Somebody paid to have their message inserted into somebody's search results. Right. And whatever those search results are, whether it, you know, it, it might be you know, inside of YouTube, or it could be Google, it could be Facebook, it could be LinkedIn. You know, where, you know right. wherever your audience happens to be, you can pay to be placed there. The great thing about SEM is it's instant. You start paying and you start showing up yeah. that moment. Where SEO, it takes time for the search algorithms to 
analyze your content, look at the influencers that are looking at your content, and decide where to place it in, and, in the ranking. And, and I, think, me, I think that's really important. It takes time. This is not something that happens in 24 hours. This doesn't happen in a couple of days. This doesn't happen by the end of the week. And, and one of the first things that's always a red flag for me is anybody who guarantees it <clears throat> can't. You can't guarantee it. You can put right. a lot of effort into it. But to guarantee you the number one result on this search phrase, walk away. Because you yeah. can't, you know, it's like somebody yeah. guaranteeing you a viral video. It's not yeah. possible to guarantee it. <laughs> well, let me ask you this. Where does, for, for people so they understand SEO, <clears throat> Google's constantly looking at all these websites. Where are they pulling from for SEO? Are they looking in the actual code of the site? Are they looking at headlines? Are they looking at people who are linked to you? What are some of the factors that, that Google's looking for to see if your site is relevant? I love that question, and I get asked that question a lot. Um, and, and, I, and I love to answer that question. I'm going to try to keep it as, as non- Take your time. As, as, okay. yeah, as possible. So I analyze about 10,000 different web pages every month. It's just, it's just short of that. It's about 9,800 pages I analyze every single month. And these, uh, I, through Google Analytics and through some other tools. And all of that information goes into a database that I can then churn and say, I'm interested in if, if a headline was changed, what effect that had on rankings. So I can look at every on-site factor and every on-site fact, off-site factor for all of these sites every single month. So it helps wow. me really understand see what's where, working, what's, you know, not. what's working, and what's not. So here's the breakdown: twenty percent of search of SEO's effectiveness is on-site, meaning you have absolute influence over that. That's it's the Pareto principle. It's the twenty-eighty split. Twenty percent of your influence is on-site. So that is your your high quality content. And I, and I will say this again and again, if you're writing content that educates the humans, then you're gonna be just fine. You, because your content is what's most important. But your content has to be of the highest quality, it has to be professionally written, it has to be longer form, because anybody can write 100 words on a topic and spend some time making sure that those 100 words are great. Gotcha. But it might take, you know, it's gonna take an expert to write 1,000 words on a topic. So your content has to be top notch. After your content, then it's your, the format of your content. Does it flow nicely as, as you go down the page? Do you have one title that's your heading, your main heading, and then multiple subheadings, subheadings. that take the user, take the reader on an informational journey through the content? Do you, you know, you, you, what you don't want to do is you don't want to just assume that every reader already is at a level that you're at and you just start writing at that level. You've got to ease the people into the content and start at the elemental level. But if you break your content up in sections and somebody is more, uh, more knowledgeable about what you're writing about, they can just scroll and skip to that headline, that subheadline that says, okay, you know, this is the more detailed content. So that structure is important. That's part of that 20%. And then it's the, it's backend stuff for, for, every, you know, you have a, most of us and most of the people watching probably have a website that's on some sort of content management system. And I'm going to guess a, you know, 80 to 90% of the people are going to be on WordPress. So you have the ability to modify the, the, uh, the meta title and the meta description. Those right. are the two pieces of information that Google's going to use to place uh, when they place you in the rankings. That's going to be the title that they see and the little clip of information that they see within the rankings. That's your opportunity to incite, in, entice that click. So that's from super important. And that's important because Google looks at that as well. If you're showing up on the first page but nobody's clicking on your result, then you haven't done a good job at enticing them with your title and your description, then that works against you and, and Google will start to, to push you down. So your on-site is about 20% of the SEO's effectiveness. The other 80% comes from off-site. And what Google's looking for there is they're looking for traffic that's going to your site. If you're getting a lot of visitation, you're a popular site, that's going to move you up in the rankings. Okay. If you have contextually relevant, authoritative websites who are, are linking to you or talking about you in a very natural way, that's going to influence 
the search engines. So I'm talking about if you <clears throat> if you build uh, handmade acoustic guitars and you've got a guitar magazine writing about you and linking to you, that's contextually relevant and authoritative, and that's gonna give you that SEO boost. So traffic, your links, uh, and then your social signals. If, if, the, if the, the, social, the social channels are talking about you, if, if people are liking your videos, or they're yeah. sharing your videos, or they're talking about you on Facebook, uh, or, or, or they're tweeting about you, Google sees everything. And so all of that is that offsite 80 percent it's very hard very hard for an individual to influence that but if you're writing content that is highly educational and professionally written and magnetic yeah all of that's just going to happen are yeah, there you, things you can do that will hurt you yeah there are but I, and michael what were you gonna well i was just in? gonna say uh, seo google basically rewards good seo for good content and good websites that that's it. You know, if at the that's end of the, if at the end of the day, you build a good website with a clean backend. If you're using WordPress, you're probably eighty percent, ninety percent there with a good clean backend. You just got to tweak a few of the settings. And if you're writing good content, not content that is designed to trick SEO, to trick Google, because they can see through that. You know, it's a lot of people love keyword stuffing. Well, I'm just going to throw a whole crap load of important words into this article, but they really don't relate to the article. You're not going you're going to get penalized for that. So just And that's, yep, that's Just just do you. just do a good job with good content, consistently posting it, consistently getting it out there to um, your Facebook, your Twitter, your Instagram, linking back. It's always important to have the links back the links to drive back share it with people and as you said if you naturally write good content other people will pick it up and want to share it just on their own and and the relevancy of those websites is what's really important because to your example if you if you if you make guitars but you get picked up by a baking website google's like that doesn't mean anything to us. Who, who, yeah. can, who on a baking website is going to click a link to go read about building a guitar? Nobody. And that's not, is. It's not contextually relevant. It's, so, it's contextually ir irrelevant. At it's that point. it's not necessarily going to hurt you, but it's not going to help you at all. And and you've got to think. Um, there's there's a lot of these services that offer. You know, they're going to get you backlinks, and that's what those are called, backlinks, links backlinks. back to your website. And they've got a site of websites that they've built on their own out there that they just stuff with all this content and all these links back to their clients' websites. It's not going to generate anything for you because the website you're coming from is not it's not real. It's not. It's not it's a not real, real site that anybody goes to as a destination. You know, example. You go to Hypebot because that's what you want for your music news. You're not going to Hypebot because you want recipes. Sure, and and those kind of backlinks, while they may not, uh, they may not help you. They they may not hurt you, but they're and they may be neutral. So it's a waste of effort if they're. It's a neutral. waste of effort is what it comes down yeah. to. Exactly. It's a waste of effort. Now, where backlinks are valuable is when you, as a human, or when you, you hire a human to do manual outreach to the contextually relevant websites. Well, and, so, and to that example, in a musician's case, you've got a publicist. You've hired a publicist. Mm -hmm. They're reaching out to all of these websites to get your press release posted, to get you an interview. That's great, but what is really important is to make sure there's actually a link to you in that article somewhere. Yeah. A link yeah. back to your website, not just an right. article about you, but a link, you know, at the end. For more information, visit. And just, have, just, and just that. a link That's to the website. That's it. You don't, need, yeah. you don't need to do anything fancy. You don't need to have a, a link that says, you know, handmade guitars. And that's the link. You don't, you, in fact, you, you probably don't even want that because Google will see that as a possible over-optimization. Because there aren't many links that say handmade guitars and that's the link. So Google might say, okay, you're, you're trying too hard to influence me. Instead, have it be a press release or an article about handmade guitars and then a link Just to the website. Link. Google's going to put all of that together and then assign it to that link. So, you know, the algorithm is getting smarter and smarter all the time. Is there Jumping back. Go, go ahead. ahead. 
Well, I was just going to ask you, is there some clients or people that you see that are doing it well? And what are, what does that look like? Yeah. So actually, I, you know, I've, I've got a, I've got a, some, I've got a lot of clients that I can tell you where it's working really well. Um, and, and at the end of every month, we, we sort of, you know, we, we look at all the numbers, but I, I, I actually have uh, one example that I, that I was just thinking, uh, that I was just thinking about recently. So it, this is a client I, I have, I got to keep anonymity for my clients sure. because, you know, you know, makes sense. You know, just, yeah, they're confidential, um, you know, my, my work for them. But th- so this is a client that I started with last January, or this past January, January, 2018. And at the time they were getting 6,000 visits to their month, uh, to their website a month, round numbers, about 6,000 visits. And they do all of their sales of their product through their website. They were converting at about 7%. So with 6,000 visits at 7%, that's about 420 conversions, 420 sales. And that's at, I think they're about $140, $150 a sale. So 6,000 visits, 7% conversion, 420 sales. It's about $63,000 a month they're making. And so they brought me in and it took three months to ramp up their traffic. And so this is where you really start to identify success. We ramped up their traffic just through organic SEO to about 19,000 visits per month. So just over tripled their traffic. But more importantly, we, we, I worked with them on their conversions, their on-page conversions. So looking at their conversion points, their buy now buttons or their, you know, we, we, whatever we did to help increase those conversions, we, we, we increased conversions from about 7% a month to 9%, just a 2% increase per month had a dramatic effect. So we almost, we just over tripled their traffic, increased conversions by a couple of percents. And so they were selling about 1,700 per month. So from 420 per month to 17, just over 17, 1710 was the average number per month after three months. And that was about a quarter million dollars in sales per month. So, so that's how you can, that's how you identify a good campaign. A successful campaign is when you can see an almost quadruple in revenue uh, you know, based on a tripling in traffic and just a small uptick in conversion. I feel like I just really geeked out for a couple of seconds there. No, that's okay. But I guess the question is, th- those are all fantastic results. What were some of the tactics that you optimized to make that happen? Sure. So the <clears throat> the initial tactics were all on page. Spent the whole first couple of weeks doing on page fixes. Got it. Uh, a great example is their, in WordPress, which they were using, the title for all of their pages, which is configurable inside of WordPress, the title was the same for every single page on their website. Uh So one of Google's first stops when they're analyzing a page and the algorithm is analyzing a page is, what's the page title? If I come to a website that has 200 pages and every single page has the same title. Google doesn't know what to display. I'm, I'm not sure, I'm not sure where to go with this. Gotcha. Most of their pages were missing meta descriptions. The meta description is the second stop that Google is going to make to say, hey, what's this page about? Well, if, you know, if you're not giving Google the information that Google's looking for, and Google's not gonna, not gonna work hard to figure that out for you, you've gotta tell Google. And it's gotta be unique from page to page so that Google can really hone in on what each page is about. If it's all the same or it's missing, Google doesn't know what to do at that point. And now it's got to look at your content and you got to hope your content's written well enough for Google to be able to differentiate. And if it's not, you know, now you've got that third strike against you. You know, hello page two or page three of the search results. So that's where we spent the first couple of months is fixing all of those, or first couple of weeks. And we fixed all of those errors. And that's where we saw that immediate uptick in traffic. Make sense. So, so it, it. yeah, it definitely yeah, does. It does. So, so let let's Just thinking about it. Let you know we've got we've got about <clears throat> ten minutes left here. I want to go to the other end of the spectrum here. What can you do to hurt your SEO? What can you do accidentally just because you don't know what you're doing, or you hire a company that claims to be one of these experts that you don't know? And they do something. What can be done, and and what could be the results of that? Yeah. So here are, here are some of the things that, if especially if you hire one of these companies that's just blasting you with emails, because you you know it's not your fault. You don't know. You don't know. You're not in this world. And they and they can pre- prevent a very convincing email that they can help you. But if they use so there's what's known as black hat SEO, and black hat SEO is the the stuff that's not ethical. It's unethical stuff. 
Um, and there are there are pieces of software. And the reason that they can do this so inexpensively is because there's no human really working on it. They've got software. There's a piece of software called Scrapebox. And Scrapebox works on your external SEO in an automated fashion by publishing your content on thousands of sites. It's it's not ethical. Google, it's not, you know, Google doesn't like it. The algorithm is going to absolutely hate it. Might initially not pick it up, but after a while the algorithm will pick it up. And what will happen is that in in the best case, you'll just never appear on page one of Google. You'll be on page two or page five, you know, whatever. Gotcha. That's the best case. In the worst case, um, and we saw that, we saw that actually uh, a big example of that first case was with JC Penney, uh, the the home kind of stuff company. They had they had been doing some black hat SEO for some of their products and Google caught on to it and pushed them from uh, positions one, two, three uh, on first page down to uh, page 17 for, you know, for a while uh, because it caught on to what they were up to. Uh, that was, I think, 2014 that happened. Uh, that's the best case is that you get pushed down the ranking. So now you got to fire that company. You got to start doing things the right way and start to build yourself back up. The worst case is that you do such a, such a bad job with this. Your your domain becomes a spammy domain. Um, you're you're doing all of this black hat stuff that's very easy to re- for Google to recognize. You could get de-indexed, and if you're de-indexed, you'll you will not show in the rankings at all. And so you're gone, and yeah. and your your chances of coming back are slim. So yeah, at that point, you have to start fresh. New domain name, new content, well, and and and, and, and you know, I've always felt like. A big part of SEO is content, content, content. Good mm-hmm. content, consistently posting content. And and if you get with the wrong company, they might have a different philosophy that they sell you on, that it's not about yeah. content, that it's all about links coming in. Don't worry. You've got great content as it is. You don't have to post any more we're just going to take what you've already had for the last two years and we're going to make a ton of links coming in. You hurt yourself because you've got bad inbound links. You hurt yourself because you've now spent six months, a year, not adding any new content to your website. And basically, from a traffic standpoint, you're just yeah. falling off a well, cliff. I think... Think about what Google wants to do. Google wants people coming back to Google to find information. And information, especially now that, you know, now we're, we're beyond the information age and we're in the age of interaction, Google wants content that is absolutely up to the minute. And if you, if someone's telling you that your content that you wrote in 2017 is enough, but that's two years ago now. And Google's going to look at the date on that content, and it's not fresh anymore. It might still be relevant, but it might also need to be updated so that Google sees that you're working hard to present the most current, relevant information to your to your users. So you'd recommend publishing information to keep things relevant, even though, let's say you're an artist and you typically are only putting up on your site new uh, images, new tour dates, and then every year or so you put out a new release and you're putting that, but there's not a lot day by day that you're, you're publishing. Would you recommend having more things connected to it and publishing more things on that site to make it more appealing? Yeah, I think the formula that I would follow is I would look at Google Analytics or I would look at some other tools and find out what search phrases people had used to find your site and now that's a phrase that's that's valuable. You find that there's a phrase that someone used to find your site. That's if one person did it, it's, and and you you, know, you analyze it, it's likely that other people would be searching for that as well. Other fans would be searching for that. So you write content that answers that need, that answers that request. And now that's how you can really blossom your your audience into visiting your website more. Aside from all the other things like, you know, publishing, you know, publishing your tour dates in, in an attractive way or publishing new releases or, you know, or lyrics, even publishing sure. your lyrics, publishing your lyrics on your site. I mean, how many people are searching for lyrics and, and artists don't have them on their sites? And now they got to go to some third party site that's bombarding people with pop ups. That's just annoying. Yeah. So put your lyrics on your site. Yeah. Very simple. That's a good point. Chris, let me ask you. So what are some basic questions somebody can ask 
either one of these blind emails or even a, a legit SEO company that they want, you know, because they're interested in SEO, what are some what are some good questions to help mm -hmm. you gain confidence that you're not you're not going to get screwed, that they're legitimate, that they know what they're doing? So if someone's approaching you, they're, they're probably going to approach you with, with a couple of different tactics. One might be that they're going to provide you with content. So the question to ask is, who's creating the content? Are they an expert? Are they an authority? Are they educated and can they write? Because of what, what a lot of these companies will do is use software that generates articles. And these articles look like absolute crap. I, 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 I can I see it. You know, you know I, it. I get that. I get those emails every week. An email shows up. Hey, um, are you accepting guest bloggers on your website? We'd love to provide you with an article. And all we ask in return is one single simple link back. And we'll even give you 50 bucks to post this for us. Yep. Sounds freaking amazing. And, and again, when I want to play with them, I email back and go, what what topic do you want to write about? Because I I know they've never even visited my website, and then they email back and go, well, what topic would you like us to write about? <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's like, and then it's you like give no, them the topic. Have, have you been to my website? Do you know? It's pretty clear what it's all about. You tell me what is the topic you're going to write about, and then we'll discuss it. And then we'll discuss. Ninety nine percent of the time. It's 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 a scam. It's a hundred percent scam. It's yeah, somebody because... who's got a client that they're looking for a backlink for their client. They see that that my website or your website has a decent ranking somewhere, and they want to they want to coattail on that. Yeah, they do. And what they'll do is they'll take the topic that they you give them and they'll put it into software and that software is going to just it's going to scrape Google for popular articles, retry to rewrite them, which never works. Yep. And then you get this piece of crap article and that represents you and your your band and your brand and that mm -hmm. that's terrible. So right. That, you know, so if they're offering you content, you got to see, send me a sample of your content. Send me five samples of your content. You don't have to send me a whole article. Just send me a couple paragraphs. I want to see what you write, you know, how your writing is. So uh, on-site, so that's on-site content. They might say that they're going to guest blog on your behalf, which is, and Mike, it sounds like you were the target of that, where yeah. they're going to, they're going to get your content or they're going to write content for you and get it posted somewhere else. So the question is, is that human to human outreach? Or are you just putting that on a website that you built? You know, that you you built a website that, and dressed it up. They, and, yeah, and, they've got the SEO company has a website farm of 100 websites out there. Yeah. And they just throw it on there, put a link back to your website. When they give you the end of the month SEO report, sure, you got a link back from this website. They're counting right. on the fact that most clients don't know enough about SEO to go research if that was really worthwhile. So, you, so the, the the specific question is: Are you reaching out to websites, you know, human to human, reach out to websites that you don't own to get articles posted? And are these websites contextually relevant to my website? Not the baker, not the bakery that's linking back to the acoustic guitar manufacturer, right? And then the the third thing they might try to do is say, "Hey, we're going to get you a lot of social, uh, a lot of social shares." And so, you know, then the question becomes: Are these real human accounts? And how, you know, why are they incentivized to share my content to begin with? And if, if they're paying for social, you know, Google's going to figure that out pretty sure. quickly, you know, based on all of the other social shares at that, that individual. Well, you just made, made a really good point. I mean, Google's going to figure this out. They have hundreds of highly trained engineers. You see, think some knucklehead is going to outsmart them? Yeah. You know, uh, it, it, they're going to figure it out pretty quickly. Right. I mean, Google, Google software is freaking smart and they're all, we, we always read about it. They just updated their algorithm and it messed up everybody or it's helping these. They're constantly working to fix what people are trying to game in the system. And Jay, you and I yeah. have talked about this all the time. When a something lot, comes yeah. out, there's always somebody who's figured out a way to game it for the next six months until it gets shut down. Yeah. And that's and that's the exact person that you don't want. Because right. you don't want somebody that's just trying to I need to adjust today so that I can live for the next 6 months. You want you want the the foundational stuff that I talked about early on, that 20% 
that you can control, you want that to just always be moving up, uh, up and to the right. You just always want that up and to the right. You don't want that saw blade pattern because that's yeah. not good for anything. Is an SEO relationship something that you need to have ongoing forever? Or is this a three-month relationship and then you're done with them? How, how long should you expect to be able, should you expect to have to hire somebody? All right. So I run an SEO business. So my preference is that we're with them forever, of course. But um, in if I, if I look at my clients, um, <clears throat> I've got a client who's had me on board for 12 years. And every month we do effort for them. And it's just it, it, they, they make millions and millions of dollars off of the work I do. I charge a couple thousand dollars a month. And every year they make millions of dollars that we can directly att attribute to the work that I do. So that's because we've worked together for so long. It's I'm, I'm almost you know, I talk to them once a month for 15 minutes. And they're like, things are going good. Things are going great. Anything we need to know? Nothing you need to know. We're going to keep going. You still making a lot of money? We're still making a lot of money. That's a you know that's that's one example of a, a great client relationship that I have. But I've got other clients who brought me in, fix a bunch of stuff, teach us what we should be doing. You know, teach us best practice, and let's see the results. And now we're going to take a break. And if we start to see traffic going down, we'll bring you back in to bring it back up. And it's those those kind of clients who uh, the, the projects are are exciting because we get to do have some impact right away. But sometimes it's a little frustrating for me because I hate I hate to see traffic drop. It's, you know, I hate to I hate to build up traffic to right. a website and then see it drop a little bit. So, you know, there are short term engagements that can work that can be very effective, especially when the client takes control and keeps doing the activities. But if you stop the activities, as we talked about earlier, we get that, you know, that steep drop off. Final question, Chris, what can somebody expect to spend for good SEO? Mm, that's a great question. And it's it, it's almost like saying, uh, what can you expect to spend when you build a house? There's, if With SEO and an SEO consultant with me, you can spend $500 a month or you can spend $50,000 a month. And we have clients in all of those ranges. At, at the low end, you know, for, the, for somebody who doesn't have a lot of money, with the $500 a month for a couple of months, I'm going to get the website fixed up, going to you know, to work on some of those contextually relevant sources that can um, give some authority to your site. Um, you know, it, it's a slower process because that budget just doesn't allow for a lot more effort to happen. But for the clients who pay in, you know, into the five figures, there's a lot of time that's dedicated. There's hours dedicated every day to that client, and sure. we and we see you know much faster results. But they have the revenue to support it, and not everybody will have that, right? Sure, and it really comes down to you know you don't spend ten thousand dollars a month to make a five hundred dollars sale, you know, or you know, or, you know, or what you know, whatever it is you happen to be, sure, you know, sure. whatever your revenue, whatever you make money from, it doesn't make sense to spend more than you can make. That's backwards. We generally like to see a five to eight times ROI. So if you're spending a thousand dollars a month, you should be making five to eight thousand dollars a month from the work that I do. You know that client that I referenced earlier that makes millions of dollars a year. I mean, their ROI is through the roof, and because they've been with me for so long, I'm just not going to go in and charge them a hundred thousand a year. You know, they can stick with me for fifty thousand a year and make right. millions of dollars. You know, it's wow. you know, it's just so they can expect there's there's a range that you can expect to pay, but you're going to get more results. The more you know, the more effort that you're able to place in, and that's there's a dollar value associated with and, that. And, and yeah. Chris, if people have questions for you or want more information, where can they reach out to you online? Sure, um, an easy, uh, probably the the best way to get a hold of me is find me on Facebook, and uh, I, I Facebook Messenger is generally the a great way to chat with me. Um, you can find me on Skype, Chris Prouty, just C H R I S P R O U T Y. Find me on Skype. Skype me. Um, we can, you know, in the show notes, um, I'm happy to put in you know, some some other uh, some other ways of getting a hold of me. But Facebook Messenger is a great way of communicating with me. Face uh, FaceTime or uh, what is the uh, iMessenger through you know Apple's iMessenger is another great way to get a hold of me. Chris at nine twice dot com. Um, email I get I get hundreds and hundreds of emails a day. Sometimes it's hard to to get through all of those. But if you want my attention, you know, getting you know. You can tweet to me at at nine twice. 
Great. Yeah. That works well. Chris, this we'll is fantastic. We'll put it on. You know, there, there's, there's so much that you can get into regarding SEO here, but I hopefully we gave everybody a nice little 10,000-foot overview of what SEO is, how to avoid getting burnt, because... Mm-hmm. Uh, we've all seen it happen. People Just, get yeah, yeah. people get Do burned, and 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 it and it it can be dangerous. I mean, it can ruin things for you if you go the wrong path in SEO. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's been a pleasure being here, guys. I really, I really great like conversation. We'd love to have you on again. Oh, Lots, fun. We I uh, learned a lot. Yeah. Thanks Any, so much. Anytime at all. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Great. Thanks, Chris. All right, guys. Take care. Thanks again. Yep. Um, that was a great conversation. I you know I love I I love SEO in the sense that. It is really important. Um, you really should understand the basics of what it is. Yeah. What, you know, it's important to bands. You know, you might sit here and think it's only important to people who've got million-dollar companies. But, you know, you need to get found as a band on the Internet. And That's SEO right. is the way it helps do that. Well, well I think with SEO, it's, uh, people are inherently afraid of what they don't understand. And SEO kind of scares some people, but it's not really hard and there's a lot of misinformation out there. That's what I loved about Chris is he's kind of clearing the air and telling us, you know, what really matters and and what doesn't. And I think that you need to dig into your SEO if you want to get more people visiting your website. You 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 just need to think about what you're doing. It, again, I said it before. It comes down to just post good content, consistently post good t- content, have a well built, well written website. And if that's all you do, naturally, good SEO is going to come your way. It might take a while, but it will just happen naturally. Google rewards good content. That's all they want to do. They want to make sure page one is filled with good, relevant links and not crappy links. Yeah, absolutely. All right, everybody. Good discussion. That's it. Another episode of the Music Biz Weekly Podcast. We're out of here.